Hello, this is Ms. Wynn with the fourth part of the Algebra 2 final exam review. Note, this is only for pre and PGT, not for regular classes. So again, for pre and PGT, you have a couple extra questions. Here are your extra topics. The first one will be the fundamental theorem of algebra, then the rational root theorem, then arithmetic sequences and series, then geometric sequences and series. So first question, what does the fundamental theorem of algebra tell us about each function? And the fundamental al theorem of algebra talks about the degree, the exponent. Here I see the degree is 2. If the degree is 2, that means there are two roots or two, two solutions. Two roots or solutions or zeros or x intercepts, although it could be imaginary. I'm going to repeat. Um, if there are two roots, technically you know, or two answers, you should also know there, that means there are also, all right, this equals two factors. Right, you can turn every root into a factor by doing the opposite. Um, this first one is pretty simple. If I wanted to solve it, I could factor. Uh, if I do guess and check, I see that's x what, plus 3, x plus 2. Right, so there's two factors and there's two solutions or roots. The two roots are x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 2. So two answers means two root, uh, factors. All right, so the exponent, the highest exponent, the degree tells you how many solutions there are, how many roots there are, also how many factors there are. So there's right side, x to the ninth power plus 4x to the fifth minus 3x squared minus 7. I see the highest exponent is 9. So the degree is 9. If the degree is 9, that means there are 9 roots or solutions. Now, there could be repeats, so they all be different. They could be the same one twice. It could be a double root or triple root or quadruple root. Remember, that's when it bounces off the graph. But uh, if there's 9 roots, that means there are nine factors, uh, linear factors. And again, there could be repeats, but there's nine factors total. All right, next question. What are the possible rational zeros for the following function? Uh, 4x cubed plus 5x squared plus minus 8x plus 12. Well, the degree is 3, and it's uh, three solutions, uh, three factors. But uh, one of the possibilities, remember this is where we do our plus or minus p over q thing. p comes from the last term and q comes from the first term. I gotta figure out what all the numbers are. So 12, the factor 12 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Because 1 times 12 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12. All right, then 4, we have 1, 2, and 4. Remember, our job is to make the list of plus or minus p over q. So I'm doing each of them over each of the p's over the first q one, then each of the p's over the second q two, then each of the p's over the third q, which is four. So let me start. Let's use blue. All right. So I have plus or minus one over one, plus or minus two over one, plus or minus three over one, plus or minus four over one, plus or minus six over one, plus or minus twelve over one. I finished all the ones, now I'm doing the next part. So plus or minus 1 over 2, plus or minus 2 over 2, plus or minus 3 over 2, 4 over 2, plus or minus 6 over 2, plus or minus 12 over 2. One more, so I do all of them over the 4 now. So plus or minus 1 over 4, plus or minus 2 over 4, plus or minus 3 over 4, plus or minus 4 over 4, plus or minus 6 over 4, plus or minus 12 over 4. All right, that's the entire list, but the good thing is there's a lot of repeats. We can cross the repeats. So I'll just go in order. Uh, plus or minus, or plus or minus. Right, this right here is 1. That's fine. This right here is 2. That's new. This is 3 and 4 and 5, oh sorry, 6 and 12. So 3, 4, 6, 12. All right, then we have this one. This is new, plus or minus 1 half. Then right here, 2 divided 2, well, that's 1. That's a repeat, so I don't need it. Uh, 3 over 2, that's new, so I'm going to use that. Uh, 4 divided 2 is 2, that's a repeat, don't need it. 6 divided 2, that's 3, that's a repeat, don't need it. 12 divided by 2, that's 6, that's repeat, don't need it. All right, uh, then here's a new one, a fraction 1 fourth. Here, 
2 divided by 4 is 1 half. That's repeat. Don't need it. 3 fourths. That's new. Uh, 4 divided by 4. That's just 1. That repeat. 6 divided by 4. That's 3 over 2. That's a repeat. And 12 divided by 4. That's 3. That's a repeat. So here's my official list. Uh, how does this work? So I'll leave it there. All right, so plus or minus all these numbers. These are the possibilities. If it's a rational root, if it's a fraction root. So plus or minus 1, or plus or minus 2, or plus or negative 3, plus or negative 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 12, plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 3 halves, plus or minus 1 fourth, or plus or minus 3 fourths. And that's it. That's the list they want. All right, next question. What is the common difference for each of the following arithmetic sequences? Uh, now, these are arithmetic sequences. So they have the same common difference. We're to figure out what are, they, what are they adding and subtracting each one. And to find that, D, you just do the second number minus the first number. Now, when you subtract a negative, that's really adding. So this 4 plus 1, that's 5. So they're adding 5 each time. So we can check negative 1 plus 5 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. Good. 9 plus 5 is 14. That's good. So here the common difference is 5. I'll try the same thing for the next one. Uh, I'll go down here. So the common difference is the second number minus the first number. So 2 minus 10, well, that is negative 8. If it's negative, it means we're subtracting. So I'll draw here. So 10 minus 8, or 10 plus negative 8 is 2. Good. 2 minus 8. That's negative 6, good. Negative 6 minus 8, that's negative 14, good. I could keep going if I find the next one, but here the common difference, D, is negative 8. Try up here. Uh, again, second number minus first number. All right, again, subtracting a negative means we're adding. So negative 5 plus 8 is positive 3. If it's positive, it means we're going up, we're increasing, adding 3 each time. So negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5, good. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, good. Negative, three plus, negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1, that's good. And if on the next number, it would be positive 4. But here the common difference is 3. Down here, same thing. Second number minus first number. I'm um, adding a negative, subtracting a negative means adding. So negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. It's negative means we're subtracting, we're decreasing. So negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8, good. Negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12, good. Negative 12 minus 4 is negative 16, good. So that's my common difference there. So just be able to find that. Pretty simple. What's the sum of the following arithmetic series? Remember, to find the sum of arithmetic series, we have a formula. That formula is this. The sum of arithmetic series is n times a sub 1 plus a sub n all over 2. All right, so we have to find what a sub 1 is, a sub n, and n. Well, to find a sub 1, that's pretty easy. a sub 1 means plug in the first value. This is the start value, and this is sigma notation. notation. So plug n is 4, so that's going to be 3 times 4 minus 5. Um, that's pretty easy to calculate. That's 12 minus 5, which is 7. So we know a1 equals 7. I'll put it in red over here. All right, uh, now we got to find a n, the last term. So we're plugging the top, that's 10. So 10 goes for n. I'll do right underneath this. So 3 times 10 minus 5, that's 30 minus 5. That gives us 25. So that's our a sub n. That's our last term in this series. So a sub n equals 25. Now we need n, the number of terms. Again, uh, it goes from n equals 4 to n equals 10. All you do is subtract top minus bottom plus 1. So I'll go right over here. So n equals top 10 minus bottom 4 plus 1. So 10 minus 4 is 6 plus 1, that's 7. So no, n equals 7. These three numbers right here, are going to fill in our formula to find the sum. So s of n equals n, there's seven numbers, seven terms, times the first term is seven, second plus the last term is 25, all over two, and we can simplify that. So let's go here. Seven plus 25, that's 32 over two. 
that's going to turn 7 times 16. And 7 times 16 is 112. So that is the sum of this arithmetic series. You could plug in n is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and add all seven of those numbers up, but you get 112 by using this formula. All right, last question. Uh, the infinite geometric series below converges. What is the sum? Um, that is a geometric series because we're multiplying by the same number, r. And let's find it. So r is the second number divided by the first number. That reduces to negative one-fourth. Remember, if r is less than one, it converges. So that's good. They told the truth. 16 times negative one-fourth is negative four. Negative four times negative one-fourth is positive one. Positive one times negative one-fourth is negative one-fourth. Negative one-four times negative one-fourth is positive one-sixteenth. So we're good there. All right, now we have to use the formula. The sum of a geometric, infinite geometric series is this, s of n equals a sub one over one minus r. All right, so we feel and we know. We found r already. a sub one is the first term. Well, a sub one is at 16. That's all we need. So I'm going to fill it in. So equals 16 divided by 1 minus negative 1 fourth. Um, we could figure out this by hand. That's not hard too hard. So the 16, I was adding, right? Over 4 over 4 plus 1 over 4 is 5 over 4. I can rewrite this as, I'm not typing the calculator as well, but 16 over 1 divided by 5 over 4. Y'all know you don't divide fractions, you multiply reciprocal. So this is 16 over 1 times 4 over 5, which gets us 64 over 5, which does not reduce. Or if you're on the decimal, it does stop at uh, 12.8. So that's what all those numbers add up to. All right, and that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the review. See you in class. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me. All right, bye.